Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mush. And today I'm here to talk to you about the end beyond doubt from the Adelaide, Australia based band Bong Coffin. And this release is coming to you from Syrup Moose Records. And Bong Coffin plays stoner doom and the music definitely has its sabbath fee moments for sure but also bong coffin comes through with something a lot more hazy and downright crushing than that this thing pummels you while also constantly hypnotizing you into this sort of stupor. Bong Coffin produces these huge swaths of sound that just kind of hammer down on you. And then they pepper it with this plethora of fantasy and science fiction references and illusions. There's these Tolkienisms here and there. It's all this experience. And the riffs feel cataclysmic it's as if they just are erupting around you but you just sit there and meditate on the eruption and just let it happen and you just sit there Gandalf starts with these steady pounding grooves and a drum beat from Adam Brook that is so skeletal it's maddening especially with these ringing ting ting Kings from the symbols and the low end here is mammoth the bass is just thrown at you with so much aggression coming from the way of simon cunningham with michael dunn's vocals you get these real gruff smoky howls with these kind of eccentric oddball yelps interjected from time to time if you map everything out on this record, and this cut in particular, on paper, it seems rather minimalist. B but when you hear it, it feels gigantic. And that's just because every note here feels like it matters and is delivered with such an emphasis. The solo here from Fenton Cunningham, it, it's kind of bluesy has these screeching bends and these fiery hammer-ons mm, it's it's pretty tasty and it has some zeppelin -y isms coming on through it trash kung in start with a darker more trad doom inspired riff that has that summoning the occult tonality that's going to scare your religious neighbors and at the same time there's a Kind of a playfulness hidden in between the gaps here, uh, especially with some of the more eccentric vocal bits thrown at you. Messiah features these minor key melodies that ring through the fuzziest of filters, but you also get these incessant down strummed chugs that push forward with so much terror. It's it's kind of cozy actually <laughs> once again the percussion here it's very sparse but equally effective especially in the way of these disorienting symbols that are very pronounced uh, the restraint shown with the drumming adds this tension that is such a vital part of the album's mood also on this cut, you get these kind of hushed, somewhat aloof clean vocals, but the, in a way that isn't supposed to be pretty at all. I love this intentional strain in the vocals on Mistress of the Obsidian Temple, and it's also met with this strange and hazy echo effect. It's as, it's as if you are being met and spoken to by this mystical uh, ancient sh shaman and <laughs> the leads here just 
whale. Good God. And then just the overall atmosphere that's found really on the entire record, but definitely and particularly on this cut that this dark magic, this fog, you just have to let it cover you. On Balrog, I love how these thin, sustained guitar notes are met with a kind of delay with these jolting guitar blasts and these snare and kick drum attacks. The, the track has this sort of jerking and snapping feel to it that is pretty thrilling with a proper headphones listen. There's such a shattering groove to this cut that's super satisfying and, and might make this track my favorite on the record because of that. Shaytin has this infectious skip to it, hops along in a way that is so disorienting in all of the right ways and the riffs are so meaty and dense that you feel it physically in your bones. And, and somehow the vocals that are delivered, these piercing shrieks, cut through all of this with ease like a laser. It's super exciting. Wasteland Winds has a slower, more methodical intro. There is this sort of melancholy that is reverberating out of it. And there's a lot of space on this record with the slower riffs. It is a doom metal record. <laughs> That's kind of obvious. But in between everything, the building anticipation is as important as to creating this anxious atmosphere as the crushing blasts from the guitars are themselves. There is this emotional richness to Nightmare. It's pretty sorrowful. You can feel and hear and latch onto this yearning, both instrumentally and vocally. And it's a nice shift in mood, a subtle one that fits well here. And a very dramatic performance from each and every member of the band here helps bring that feeling forward. The band's willingness to incorporate some choir passages here aid in bringing that tone and desired feeling conveyed across. On Worthy of Mordor, <laughs> I, I couldn't help but grin at these ominous Lord of the Ring samples. There's such a sense of dread coming off of this cut. And then there's this really cool, very interesting contrast from what the bass and the guitars are doing. The guitars settle into this more long, sustained, held chord thing, but the bass doesn't do that. Instead, it punches forward with this steady marge. The, the way it contradicts each other, it makes it feel extra murky and doomy. I really enjoy these swampy swaths of pulsating buzz that kind of exist as the center point of Voidside. It's super hallucinating. There's a lot of space on this closing track. It feels like a proper way to conclude this. It's as if we've been being knocked into this daze. And this is the logical feeling to land on. This Bonkoffin record is just crushing, hazy as all hell stoner doom, but it's not a one trick stoner doom record. There's a lot of diversity and textures and riffing styles that shifts from various moods and, and feelings and, and keeps me engaged throughout the listen. The record feels and sounds mammoth, but it's actually very sparse. And I think the largest of it comes from the consideration of every inch of sound being delivered here. Nothing 
feels wasted or unnecessary. If you enjoy bands like Sleep and The Likes and that's a sound that appeals to you, then you're going to enjoy the hell out of this and you should listen to it. And hey, guess what? Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed this review, hit the like button. It helps get the video out to others. If you'd be so kind, it would mean the world to me. If you would consider subscribing, helps the channel grow, helps with the algorithm thing. Again, I have a Twitter you can follow, link to that in the bio of this YouTube channel. Consider leaving a comment. I really love engaging with those. I have a Ko-Fi now. If you're interested in supporting the show financially, feel no obligation or pressure though, but it's one way for me to consider pushing this channel forward. And that's all I got. Keep it metal. My name is Maddie, aka Beavermosh, signing off.